Hello, children. This is the story of Job. There was a rich man named Job who lived in the land of Uz. He was a good man. He always put God first in his life. One day when God was talking with his angels, Satan dropped in. God asked Satan, Have you ever seen such a good man as my servant Job? Satan liked to argue with God and said, Anyone can be good when, every, when he has everything that a man could want. He didn't need a want for anything. He has a home. He has family. He has cattle and great wealth. He was rich. Besides all that, Satan said, you don't let anything harm him. He doesn't have a clue what it's like to be miserable. He don't know what it's like to be sad and to want and to be hungry. God was convinced nothing would stop Job from loving and honoring him. So Satan asked God, hey, God. Let me prove to you that Job will be a big crybaby <laughs> and start saying bad things about you the minute something goes wrong. God replied, okay, but I know Job is faithful and what you can't turn him in and you can't turn him against me. Do what you want to him. But don't hurt him Satan. So Satan rubbed his hands together. And said. Yes. I'm going to get Job. Job was sitting quietly. When one of his workers came running and said. My master. These desert men. Killed all your servants. But me and they drove away all the cattle. While he was speaking, another man came rushing up to Job and said, Master, you would never believe it. All your shepherds, except me, were struck by lightning and killed. Oh, my God. Yet another man came running and yelling, Sir, 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 three bands of enemies have stolen all your camels and killed the men who were with them. Finally, the last messenger arrived crying, Oh no, oh no, all your children have been killed. A gigantic wind blew the house down on them. In one day, poor Job lost everything but his wife and his life. He was so sad and miserable. He went from rich to to poor in just a few hours. Did Job get angry with God? No, no, no. He fell down on his face and said to God, With nothing I came into this world, and with nothing I shall leave it. The Lord gave, and now the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. With all that went wrong, Job didn't blame God. I stopped loving or trusting God. God called to Satan. See, you couldn't make Job hate me. There is no man more perfect than Job. Satan said, trust me. If you'll let me hurt him so that he's in pain, he'll start calling you bad words. God really didn't want Satan to hurt Job. So he said, go ahead and make him uncomfortable, but don't kill him. Satan zapped Job with a huge score from his head to his feet. He was miserable with sores and boils all over his body and open cuts that were painful and oozing. He was so sad. But he still wouldn't blame God or say anything mean about God. Job's wife, who was mean and very negative, she told Job to cuss God and die. But Job refused to bow down to her, for he is the man and he is the leader of the household. 
He was the man who brought in the wealth. She wasn't. He didn't need to listen to her. He needed to obey God. Then three of Job's best friends came to cheer him up. Eliphaz, Belladad, and Zophar. So-called friends. Mm. His friends came and what they tried to do was to say that Job could be at fault. It might be his fault. He might be to blame. But that was not true. Job wasn't to blame. God was just trying to see and prove to Satan how much Job loved him. And no matter what he did to Job, Job constantly prayed to him and he obeyed God. Although he had sores on his body and he was uncomfortable and he wished he had died, he still loved God. And at the end of all his trials and his tribulations and his troubles and all the bad circumstances in his life, once he didn't bow down to Satan and he didn't cuss, cuss God out and he didn't disobey God and he didn't blame God, God blessed him. And he got double children. He got all his land and property back. He had everything double, triple than what he had before. And Job was happy. And Job continued to love the Lord. And that's what we should do. Whenever we are in trials and tribulations and hard times and we're sad and we're hungry and we don't know how things are going to come out. We don't have our crayons and we don't have our paper and we don't have great clothes to wear to school. We don't get to go on the field trips that the other kids get to go on because we don't have the money. We need to always still thank God and know that he cares for us and that just having a breath in our bodies is worth more than taking field trips. And worth more than socks and clothes. Because if we keep loving him, we will get all the things that we need and we desire. For God cares for you. And he cares for me. And all you have to do is always trust him and believe in him no matter what comes your way. God loves you and God cares. Be good and be kind to one another. God bless you little ones.